Hello there. Welcome to another podcast from School of Surgery. I'm Keaton Jones, an academic clinical fellow in general surgery at Oxford, and I'm here today with Mr. Sean Appleton, who's a consultant upper GI surgeon at Buckinghamshire Healthcare Trust. We're going to talk to you today about anti-reflux surgery. First of all, thanks for coming and spending time talking to us today. It's a pleasure. So start off with the basics. Uh, basic question often we're afraid of asking in clinic. What is acid reflux? Acid reflux is a condition where the stomach acid gets uh, refluxed into the lower esophagus uh, such that it gives significant symptoms or even damages the esophagus. Okay. And uh, how do t- patients typically present, whether it be in the GP or outpatient setting? The classic presentation is with heartburn, that heavy, deep pressure behind the sternum uh, that can be associated with certain activities, lying down, eating certain foods or bending over. Okay. And what are the risk factors for developing gastroesophageal reflux? The commonest risk factors are being overweight, uh, occupations which require a lot of bending over, and certain can, uh, medications can actually loosen the lower esophageal sphincter as well. Um, alcohol is also implicated in uh, acid reflux. Okay. And how would we manage it in terms of first line treatments? So acid reflux, you're right, is very common. In fact, all of us have had a degree of heartburn occasionally. Um, for those people where it becomes a persistent problem, then initial treatment would be controlling the factors that you can control, so advising weight loss, uh, avoiding precipitants such as bending over, avoiding tight clothes or belts that compress the stomach. Uh, And for those that get problems at night in particular, sometimes tilting the bed so that uh, you're sleeping in a more upright position can help. Mm -hmm. Moving on from that, uh, simple treatments such as anti-acid medication that you can buy over the counter, Gaviscon is a typical example, uh, are often used. First line medication nowadays is usually moving straight to a proton pump inhibitor such as Lansoprazole or Esomeprazole. There are lesser versions which were popular uh, in the 80s and 70s which are the H2 receptor antagonists such as Renistine and Tagamet. They're not used as often now, but some people do find those better or have a better side effect profile. Okay. And if I'm a GP and I'm seeing lots of patients with acid reflux and I'm managing them with the conservative and medical treatments, who are the patients I should refer to yourself at the hospital as a surgeon for consideration for more invasive management? So the proton pump inhibitors work extremely well for most patients. There are a small number where they still get heartburn symptoms despite maximal treatment with a proton pump inhibitor or a prokinetic, which can increase gastric emptying. Uh, And those patients can sometimes be helped with an operation. The other group that uh, I see are young people who do get response from the medicines but don't want to be taking it every day for the rest of their lives. I see. Okay, that makes sense. So when these patients are referred to the outpatient department, aside from a standard medical surgical history taking exercise, are there any specific questions which are relevant to this presentation? I think it's important to try and differentiate between acid reflux, uh, where they often present with persistent heartburn, and volume reflux, where the heartburn may not be quite an issue, but they are getting evidence of acid refluxing into the upper uh, esophagus. Uh, These patients can often get uh, acid erosion of the teeth, and so I ask whether their dentist has ever mentioned the problem of acid erosion. There is some suggestion that they may get overspill into the larynx uh, and get persistent sore throats, or even worsening of their asthma, or even respiratory tract infections. Okay, so we've got these patients who are coming to the surgical outpatient department, and if their history does suggest they have severe reflux disease, What investigations would we refer them for? So first investigation would be a straightforward uh, upper GI endoscopy, if they haven't had that already. And we're looking for any laxity in the lower esophageal sphincter uh, or inflammation or esophagitis 
as a result of the reproduction. And provided the endoscopy confirms that there's an element of uh, re reflux suggestive uh, on the imaging, are there any other tests we would uh, then go on to perform prior to embarking on surgery? Uh, some people will do a barium swallow uh, to see if there's an associated hiatus hernia, and sometimes you can tell if there's significant reflux. The gold standard test, though, would be esophageal studies, and this includes measuring the pH in the esophagus over a 24-hour period, and also manometry studies to look at the peristalsis in the esophagus and the pressures in the upper and lower esophageal sphincter. Okay. And then, uh, provided those investigations support uh, going forward with operative intervention in, in, a, in a patient, what are the potential surgical management options? The ideal treatment is a laparoscopic approach, and it would be laparoscopic anti-reflux surgery. This involves several components, but the important ones are uh, mobilising the lower esophagus and doing a crural repair of the esophageal crura, and also a fundoplication. And in terms of fund location, I remember when I was a medical student, I just thought it encompassed a single operation and it dealt with the reflex. Uh, now that I'm a surgical trainee, I've come to understand a little bit more of the nuances of the operation. Would you be able to describe what are the potential options for rotating the stomach rather than just calling it a Nissen's fund application? So the classic operation, as you say, was the Nissen or the Nissen Rossetti fund application, which is a posterior fund application of the fundus of the stomach all the way around the stomach, uh, back of the esophagus, uh, and then sutured to the greater curve or anterior part of the stomach. Uh, this is a 360 degree total fundal wrap. Uh, there are other options. The toupee is a 270 degree wrap behind the esophagus, and there's the anterior door wrap, which is a 180 degree wrap across the front of the esophagus. Okay. Um, there are various reports about which is the best, and sometimes it's down to personal preference and the degree of side effects, but the uh, posterior 360 degree or Nissen and the posterior 270 degree toupee wrap are the commonest ones. Okay. And what are the main risks of this anti-reflux surgery? So what you're trying to do is uh, tighten or improve the function of the lower esophageal sphincter. However, if you tighten it too much, the biggest problem is difficulty swallowing or dysphagia, so that the food, that patients have problems getting food down. Okay. And typically, uh, if a patient does come in for this operation, how long would they expect to stay in hospital for? Uh, most patients have a one-night stay in hospital. Uh, so they'll come in, have the operation, and immediately post-operatively we will allow them to drink. Uh, the following day we see if they can tolerate a light diet, and if they can and they're pain-free, they'll go home the day after surgery. Okay. And uh, typically, um, how many patients would uh, need further intervention or have a recurrence of symptoms? Uh, I tell patients that there's a 90% to 95% chance that it will significantly improve their acid reflux. About 10% of patients will get gas bloat, feeling discomfort if they drink uh, gassy drinks or eat too quickly because you've tightened the lower esophageal sphincter and they can't reflux up the gas. 10% of patients will get troublesome flatulence. Uh, and about 5% of patients will get troublesome dysphagia, uh, so they'll have to adapt their diet or even occasionally we have to go in and undo some of the sutures to relax the wrap. Would you say it's an enjoyable operation to perform? Absolutely. It's a great operation. Good. I'm pleased to hear it. Um, so thank you very much for talking to us today. Uh, I think we've covered a very important topic. We briefly talked about what acid reflux is, how common it is in the general population, how patients typically present, the main risk factors, the management options available to GPs in the primary care setting, the investigations we perform in the outpatient department, along with the key questions, the specialist investigations including upper GI endoscopy, pH studies and manometry, the indications for surgery, along with the surgical management options, which is anti-reflux surgery, and the risks of recurrent disease. Thank you very much. Thank you for listening to another podcast brought to you by School of Surgery. Remember you can follow us on Facebook at School of Surgery, 
on iTunes, on Podomatic at schoolofsurgery.podomatic.com, and finally, by searching School of Surgery on YouTube. Thank you very much, and see you next time.